Hello, you absolute legends. Well, they are back at it again. The biggest con men in video game history have filed even more lawsuits in retaliation for their fake scores being removed. By now, you're almost certainly all familiar with Billy Mitchell, the disgraced Donkey Kong player and star of King of Kong, who was exposed as cheating in many of his records. I've already covered his current lawsuits against Twin Galaxies in previous videos, and he has now filed a $100,000 lawsuit against the current Pac-Man world champion, David Race. The reason for this lawsuit will blow your mind with its stupidity, and we will take a look at it later in the video. The list of victims that have been attacked by Mitchell through the legal system continues to grow, and he is utterly out of control. Considering the damage Mitchell has caused so far, I actually think I've been pretty restrained in my coverage, but now things are getting a bit too ridiculous. The man is trying to ruin lives, and I'm now of the opinion he is legitimately evil, and hopefully something can be done to stop him soon. But perhaps one of the more shocking developments is a new lawsuit from none other than Todd Rogers. In 2019, I released a video called The Longest Con in Video Game History, which outlined the story behind his Dragster world record. In a nutshell, Rogers claims to have the longest world record in video game history, which later turned out to be completely impossible. But Dragster wasn't his only impossible claim. Rogers submitted thousands of scores to Twin Galaxies, with absolutely zero evidence to support any of them. Over the years, many of his scores were proven to be physically impossible. Alongside Mitchell, Rogers was also banned from Twin Galaxies after an extensive investigation into his scores. While he always denied he was lying about his accomplishments, Rogers never appeared to be as villainous as Mitchell, as he seemed to just slip away into the darkness, never to be seen again. But he has come roaring back, and wants to prove to the world that he is just as big a scumbag as Mitchell. He has now filed a half a million dollar defamation lawsuit against Twin Galaxies, Guinness World Records, and Jace Hall, the current owner of Twin Galaxies. I am honestly clueless as to what he expects to happen here. Roger's claimed scores have been thoroughly proven to be impossible by many independent experts. It's plainly obvious that this lawsuit will go nowhere, and I don't think he quite understands what the repercussions are when he ultimately loses. In any case, this lawsuit is arguably more insane than Mitchell's, and in this video we are going to learn why. So please, buckle up. Because the deeper this rabbit hole goes, the weirder it gets. I hope you enjoy. Now, legends, if you want to become legitimately good at something, unlike the subjects of this video, you need a great teacher. And that is where this video sponsor, Skillshare, comes in. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of classes for pretty much anything you can think of. I am always preaching about becoming more productive, so I recommend you take the course Productivity Masterclass by Ali Abdal. It's a really entertaining and inspiring course, and you'll learn a ton of principles that will help you get more out of your day. Whether you are into animation, web development, or music, Skillshare has everything you need to reach the next level. Skillshare is extremely affordable, and the first 1,000 legends who click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership, so you can explore your creativity. Even if you've already had a free trial, you can still take advantage of this offer to get a full year of unlimited learning. Todd Rogers is the antithesis of Billy Mitchell. While being a part of the same clique, he never achieved the same kind of fame that the star of The King of Kong experienced. Rogers is a far less marketable figure, and though he did appear in the documentary Chasing Ghosts, it was more or less to demonstrate how much of a shamble his life had become since his glory days of gaming back in the 80s. Compare that to Mitchell's appearance in the same documentary, where he attempts to flaunt his apparent rock star lifestyle. Todd does not exude success, but in the relatively niche world of retro video game high scores, he was a celebrity, and would often be seen tagging along with Mitchell to various video game exhibitions. Apparently, event organizers even paid him to show up. I doubt the compensation was substantial, but who could complain about getting paid to attend a video game convention? Rogers was most known for his Dragster world record, and I'm sure you've all heard the story by now. His claimed score of 5.51 seconds was proven to be physically impossible. There is literally no way a score that fast could ever be attained. It's simply prevented by the game's code. This was demonstrably shown by multiple independent parties, and there is just no doubt to their conclusions. 
Once the first domino fell, it was game over for Rogers, as more and more of his scores were shown to be absolutely impossible to achieve. On the 29th of January 2018, Rogers was officially banned from Twin Galaxies, and the decision summary outlines two main concerns that led to that decision. The first was the agreement of results from numerous parties confirming that 5.51 seconds is not an achievable score. The second was referee testimony that seemed to confirm that Rogers had a history of entering many of his own scores. Guinness would follow up this decision by also stripping Rogers of his award for the longest standing video game record and posting a small blurb in their Next Gamers edition, which said that Twin Galaxies confirmed the time was not technically possible. Fast forward to 2021, and Todd Rogers has lawyered up and filed a half a million dollar defamation lawsuit against Spectrum Business Ventures, who were the previous owners of Twin Galaxies, Guinness World Records, and Jace Hall, who is the current custodian of Twin Galaxies. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Todd Todgers? You can't be serious. Did he really misspell his own name? You might think this is fake, but I've pulled this document directly from the Florida courts. Todd really did misspell his own name in the lawsuit filing. Definitely not off to a great start. The case laid out in this filing is very poorly written and lacks the fundamental basics required for a successful defamation claim. For example, the first most obvious inclusion to this kind of legal action would be the specific defamatory statements themselves. However, this filing doesn't include any. It does state that Todgers has suffered significant loss of reputation due to statements on social media by SBV, but no examples are provided, likely because they don't actually exist. It states that Twin Galaxies posted an article entitled, Twin Galaxies Drags to Dispute Concludes with the Banning of Todd Rogers, but again, it fails to disclose what the defamatory statements were. I can only conclude that this is because the article did not include any defamatory statements. If you read the article yourself, you'd be inclined to agree. Out of the three defendants, Guinness is the only one that sees one of their statements included. Todgers provides a snippet from the Gamers Edition where they explain that Twin Galaxies informed them that 5.51 wasn't technically possible, so they removed his award. An important thing to remember about defamation suits is that truth is an absolute defense, meaning that if the statement is factually accurate, there is simply no case against it. Everything in this paragraph is verifiably true. Twin Galaxies did notify Guinness that 5.51 wasn't technically possible. There is nothing here that is even remotely false. Given the fact that Guinness only repeated what Twin Galaxies told them, I really don't see a case here. I'm guessing this is just another attempt at strong-arming them into giving him back his record, which is exactly what happened when Billy Mitchell threatened to sue them back in 2019. Suing Twin Galaxies is especially egregious, though, when you realize just how far they went in order to help Todgers clear his name. The initial spark that led to the entire investigation of Todd's dragster record was the findings of OmniGamer, who disassembled the code and calculated the best possible time as 5.57. He also created a spreadsheet which mimicked the game perfectly, so you could just manually place inputs at which frames you like, and it would immediately tell you the result of the race. Over the next six months, multiple independent parties would also do their own analysis of the game's code and confirm that 5.51 wasn't possible. They also rigorously compared OmniGamer's spreadsheet against actual hardware and found that it was a perfect match. Essentially, all technical analysis of this problem resulted in the same outcome. Todd's score is just not achievable. However, Twin Galaxies didn't want to just take the word of relatively unknown figures on the internet. They wanted to hire an expert to validate the findings. So they paid for the help of Ben Heck, a well-known console modder and computer engineer. Ben made a couple of videos covering the investigation and openly stated that he was asked to do so by Twin Galaxies. Not only this, but Twin Galaxies flew Todgers first class to appear with Ben Heck and allow himself to prove his innocence. In total, they spent $10,000 on this. And again, this was purely to try to help Todgers clear his name, as extensive testing had all but confirmed that his record was not possible. Ben Heck's testing showed that OmniGamer's spreadsheet was accurate, and Todd failed miserably in showing that better than 5.51 was achievable. In fact, even though he could manually enter any input he wanted, he couldn't even get close. It was clear that his understanding of the game fell well short of the experts who had already chimed in with their conclusions. 
So it's pretty incredible that after spending six months investigating and thousands of dollars on expert analysis, Twin Galaxies is now being sued by the very person they were trying to help. Todgers claims that Twin Galaxies posted their article in order to bring traffic to the website, and that they made over $1 million from it. Man, if exposing a has-been gamer that literally no one outside of the retro video game high school community has ever heard of can earn you a million dollars, where do I sign up? This claim is obviously ridiculous, and just goes to show how big of an ego he has that he thinks he is this important. The reality is that Twin Galaxies doesn't earn money from its website. It doesn't even run ads. In fact, it doesn't really earn money at all. The simple truth is that the owner of Twin Galaxies, Jace Hall, just wanted to know if the scores were possible. And when the evidence said they weren't, he banned the player. There really isn't much more to it than that. I previously said that Billy Mitchell's lawsuit against Twin Galaxies was the dumbest in video game history, but Todd's might be just a bit dumber. Unlike Mitchell, Todgers has literally no videos of any of his high scores, nor were any of them ever publicly achieved. He claims he has witnesses, but none of them ever step forward because they are imaginary. The moment this is seen by a judge, Todd will be destroyed, and I am very much looking forward to it. Now on to everyone's favorite villain, Billy Mitchell, who has filed a new lawsuit against the world's best Pac-Man player, David Race. Race holds the record for the fastest ever perfect completion of Pac-Man, attaining the maximum score possible in 3 hours, 28 minutes, and 49 seconds. When the Donkey Kong scandal first began taking shape, Race was an avid Mitchell supporter, and would often write lengthy Facebook posts defending him. Mitchell took notice of this and got in touch with Race, allowing him to be part of Billy's team that was trying to disprove the cheating allegations. Race would ultimately spend months testing the exact hardware Mitchell supposedly used to create his scores. Mitchell even provided the exact arcade board that he claimed to have used. It was originally David's intent to prove Mitchell's innocence, but alas, the more he investigated, the more he realized that Mitchell's story couldn't be true. There is just no way the footage of the scores could ever be replicated on original arcade hardware. Despite the tests concluding that Mitchell's tapes were not from a Donkey Kong arcade, David still felt that there were other possible explanations for the discrepancy, such as video editing or tampering with the tapes. Perhaps someone who wanted to frame Mitchell devised a genius scheme. However, this theory was also debunked when an MTV video from 2006 showed Mitchell's score before anyone else had access to it, which also showed all of the hallmarks of emulation. In the end, David couldn't help but agree with the assertions that had already been made. Mitchell's performances were not produced from an original arcade, and there is just no way the tapes that Twin Galaxies possess were tampered with. But this didn't stop Mitchell from taking some of David's earlier comments and using them out of context to try to support his own claims. Mitchell's evidence package asserts that Race believes the technical analysis was inconclusive, but his current opinion couldn't be further from this, now that all of the facts have been presented. After David's comments were misconstrued by Mitchell in the Twin Galaxies lawsuit, David began providing testimony in defense of Twin Galaxies. In his sworn testimony, he states clearly, it is my opinion that the video game recordings of the disputed score performances cannot have come from an original, unmodified Donkey Kong PCB. This began a tangential war between Mitchell and Race in the lawsuit, with Mitchell claiming that Race gave a fraudulent declaration in an effort to seek revenge. As is always the case, Mitchell paints anyone who thinks he cheated as just having a vendetta against him. It can never simply be that they examined evidence and came to the only reasonable conclusion. This epic side battle is far too involved for me to break down in complete detail, but the crux of the matter is that David ended up releasing a recording of a phone conversation between him and Mitchell. In this conversation, Mitchell explains to Race a scheme to create a new videotape and claim it as the recording of one of his disputed scores. More specifically, the score of 1,062,800, which to date does not have a full public video. This conversation was entered into evidence to both show the deceiving nature of Mitchell and to illustrate how close the two men were. It is this exact recording that has landed David on the receiving end of a $100,000 lawsuit. Mitchell is claiming that it was illegal for David to record the conversation, but unfortunately for him, David resides in Ohio, which is where the call was recorded. 
Ohio is a one-party state, meaning that it is perfectly legal to record a conversation if you are one of the parties involved. Mitchell claims that because he called David from Florida, which is a two-party state, David should be subject to Florida law, which just isn't how it works. Mitchell's filing even admits David was in Ohio at the time. Aside from the ridiculousness of the main claim, the filing contains insane lies that are plucked out of thin air. For example, it claims that after first meeting Mitchell in 2010, David Race then joined the Pac-Man community to pursue his own high scores in the footsteps of Mitchell. But David was already the best Pac-Man player in the world by the time they met. In 2009, he already held the record for the fastest ever perfect completion. Trust me, I've studied all of Mitchell's lawsuits. There are so, so many crazy lies, it really boggles the mind. He has absolutely no inhibitions about constructing fake stories that are incredibly easy to disprove. I am personally of the opinion that this new lawsuit is just another attack on someone that Mitchell wants to hurt for speaking out against him. Now, let's do a quick rundown of all of the current legal action Mitchell is taking. He is suing Twin Galaxies in California for $1 million for removing his high scores and saying they weren't achieved on original hardware. He also filed a $10 million lawsuit against them in Florida. He is suing Jeremy Young for $1 million who was the person who originally declared that Mitchell's tapes were performed on emulator. He filed a $2 million lawsuit against Jeff Harris, who owns and runs Donkey Kong Forum. This is the official Donkey Kong High School leaderboard that all of the top players use. They are being sued for removing his scores and allowing posts outlining the evidence that Mitchell cheated. He also sued YouTuber Apollo Legend for $1 million. I haven't spoken about this publicly, but this lawsuit ultimately ended with Apollo giving in and settling with Mitchell. The lawsuit against Apollo was just as frivolous as the rest, and Apollo definitely would have won in court, but again, he was extremely ill and couldn't handle the ongoing stress. Mitchell threatened to sue Guinness World Records, causing them to cave in and reinstate his fake scores. He also hired a lawyer in Australia and threatened to sue me, trying to extort me for $150,000. In all likelihood, if he is not stopped, he probably will sue me eventually. And now, of course, he is suing David Race for exposing him and helping Twin Galaxies with their lawsuit. It's really important to remember that Mitchell has never had a lawsuit actually go the distance and result in his favor. In the past, people would get too scared and comply, until he went up against the new owner of Twin Galaxies, Jace Hall, who is anything but a pushover. The only lawsuit that actually ended in a judgment was Mitchell's lawsuit against Cartoon Network, which he hilariously lost. And trust me, he is going to lose every single lawsuit from here on out. People are fed up with being pushed around and they are beginning to fight back. Unfortunately, fighting requires money, which is why I have launched a GoFundMe to support victims of Billy Mitchell's frivolous lawsuits. Money is really important for two main reasons. The first is that we can provide good quality lawyers to ensure that the lawsuits are defended successfully in a swift manner. Secondly, lawsuits are extremely stressful, and any support would go a long way to help the victims deal with these attacks in good spirits. The priority at the moment will be to help David Race, Jeremy Young, and Jeff Harris. Any surplus funds will be used to aid Twin Galaxies in their defense, or to help myself if Mitchell takes action against me. I really also want to give back to supporters, so backers will gain access to regular video updates that I will provide, going far more in-depth into the status of all of these lawsuits. If you have any other suggestions about ways I can add value, or ways you think we can help, please let me know. All of Billy Mitchell's victims are just huge fans of competitive gaming. They have devoted their lives to it, and are just doing their best to ensure that fraudsters like Mitchell are removed from the community. They don't deserve this at all. And although it might take a little bit of time, patience, and money, Billy Mitchell will be stopped, and he will be forced to face the consequences of his actions. Remember, when he does ultimately lose, he will need to pay back every single penny that was spent defending against his frivolous lawsuits. I really, really do appreciate all of the help. As always, thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.